Hey Marzio, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to cover uh, some more advanced Git stuff, including the Git command line interface, as well as Git LFS, which is Git large file storage, and go over how to write a proper commit. I'm not going to go too much in depth into this, but I'll kind of glance over some stuff that I think you should know and go over the basic workflow of Git in the command line interface that I basically showed you in the previous video, except in the GUI. Before we get started, head over to my Discord server, link is in the description and the top comment. There on the Discord server, you'll be able to share your experience as well as ask questions and share knowledge with other developers. So please head over right now and join the server. The first thing that you're gonna wanna do is to download Git command line interface. Now this will depend on what uh, operating system you're using. If you're using a uh, Linux, Mac OS, or Windows, the process is going to be slightly different. So I'll post a link to the description, head over to that link and download and set up Git um, on your computer. Now I'm not sure if the GUI that you've installed uh, comes with this, just in case, uh, install this to be 100% sure. Now I'm gonna briefly go over the basic concepts that we're going to be using once again, just to quickly recap what we're doing. So we're going to be creating a local repository on our machine, and then we're going to create a file, add that file to the repository, we're gonna call commit, uh, then we're gonna take this repository and push it to the remote server to set it up on GitHub. That's all we're going to be doing, and um, I'm not gonna show you too much in depth. I'm just gonna go over the basic functions that you're going to be using, and then send you the documentation in case you wanna learn more. So now that you've downloaded Git and you got everything set up, create a new repository folder. Now this could be just a completely empty folder. This is what I have on my desktop. It's, it has contains absolutely nothing in it. And then right click and git bash here. Now your uh, git will be slightly different based on what operating system you're using. Essentially what you need to do is just navigate inside uh, an empty folder or the folder for whatever project you wanna put on git. Now the, what you're gonna wanna do is type git init and this is going to initialize an empty repository uh, in this folder. Now, if you have enabled the um, uh, view hidden folders function or whatever it is, I think it's in view hidden items. If you check that in Windows, you'll be able to see a .git folder. Now, this is essentially the folder that contains the entire Git repository um, backend, essentially all of the methods that Git uses to track all the files and stuff like that. Alongside here, you'll be creating all the files that you need. So let's go ahead and create a file here. You could do this through the command line if you want, but I'm just going to create it for easy access. So I'm gonna call this test.txt, and inside I'm gonna say, hey, that's a test. I guess, save that and close it. So now we have this uh, change that we made. Go back into the command line interface and type in git status. This will allow us to see what uh, has been changed. And here we see all, we, that we're on branch master, that there have been no commits yet, and that there is an untracked file, and the untracked files are gonna be displayed in red. And it's gonna give you a little hint here to use git add file to include in what will be committed. So let's go ahead and type in git add. The uh, equivalent of this is essentially you drag and dropping into the GUI all of the files that you haven't committed yet. So let's do git add test, Dot txt. If you press uh, tab, it will autofill whatever is the closest thing. Oh man, it's getting dark. Git add test.txt. Boom, that's it. It's just gonna do that. And then let's type in git status one more time. Now it's gonna say in green, new file test.txt. What this means is essentially git is now tracking this file for the next commit. Now let's make a commit. Let's do git commit dash m. What dash m is essentially a uh, parameter to specify a comment for your commit. You remember those comments that you put in for your commit messages? That's exactly what you're specifying. Now inside this, put in uh, the brackets or whatever, what are these called? I forget what parentheses or, no, not parentheses. What are, what are these called? Quotes, double quotes, um, and then put in your commit message. So add um, test text file. And then it's gonna give you back a little uh, thing saying master root commit, uh, blah, 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 add text file, one file change, one insertion, create mode, blah, blah, blah. So now if you type in git status, it will say 
on branch master there's nothing to commit it's weird the sun is always changing and uh, i'm gonna have to get a better lighting setup to to make these videos a bit better so putting that aside essentially git status will show you the uncommitted changes and all things that you haven't yet uh, put onto the local repository technically speaking you can have a repository that's completely local you don't ever have to use github you don't ever have to use any sort of uh remote backup but you might as well so that you can have that code anywhere you go but you can have this git repository that tracks all of your changes or and everything like that just completely local if you don't want to do that you could go ahead and track everything locally what we can do is if we type in git push which would usually push to the remote repository online now if we type git push which would usually push to the remote repository online what we get back is saying there's no configured push destination now what this means is essentially there's nothing that's configurable uh there's nothing that's configured uh, to send to so we're not we didn't specify any sort of repository so the first thing that we want to do is create a new repository on git so here we have our new repositories on uh, sorry on github let's create a new repository let's make it public we're just going to do test repo and then don't don't initialize anything don't put anything here and just create an empty blank repository now you'll see if test repo it's essentially completely blank there's no code or anything there's never been any changes made it'll give you a little bit of instructions that you can do to uh, set everything up let's go ahead and uh, set up the uh, existing repository from the command line so let's do git remote add origin yes after we've typed that in essentially if we type this doesn't tell us anything. However, what it did is actually added a remote repository tracking to our um, local repository, essentially kind of link the two together. It says, oh, so when you're calling push, you're actually going to send all of these files over to the server. And this server is located at HTTPS, da, 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 this link. So now if we do git push, you origin master, we're pushing onto the master branch. We wait and it's gonna tell us that it's enumerating objects, it's doing blah, 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 blah. It write, wrote the objects, everything's done. And now if we refresh this, there we go. Our new repository has been created on GitHub. Now that was essentially the same thing that we've done with the GUI in the previous video, except in this one, it was a little bit more complicated because you had to type all of the commands manually. So it's still important that you guys uh, use this or at least learn how to use this because it will make you uh, understand how Git works on the back end. Basically, you're gonna avoid all of the most common mistakes that people, people do. This is just to kind of help you uh, solidify your knowledge and understand this a bit more. Now, if we type in Git status, it just shows us that there's nothing to come in and we can repeat this over and over and over again remember to uh get init to initialize a repository git add and then the file name or file names to add all of the file names there's also shortcuts like git git add dot which will add the current of a uh, repository uh, i mean current um files this will add all of them star and so on just look it up in the uh, git documentation after you've added the remote repository so that's pretty much it for the command line interface there's a lot of other commands that you should be learning and just kind of understand but this these are the main ones that um that you'll be using now you can also do git branch branch feature new feature that will essentially create a new branch and however it doesn't change to that branch so you what you have to do is you have to do git checkout feature new feature to actually switch to that branch and you'll be shown right here what branch you're on so you could go ahead and switch back to the master branch and you could do all of the stuff and then merge so git merge um feature new feature but i don't think it's gonna work okay it's up to date so it doesn't really doesn't really need to do because they're essentially in, on the same um level of updating it's all the same it's essentially just commands uh, but the behavior is exactly the same as is in the GUI. Essentially, GUI is just a wrapper that calls all of these commands uh, on the back end. All right, let's move on to Git LFS. Git LFS is an extremely useful thing for you if your repository has any files that are, say, uh, assets like 3D models or 2D models, sprites, all, all sorts of stuff, sounds, everything. Essentially, what Git LFS is, this uh, repository, right? call it R and it has a bunch of files and stuff like that now these files are say text files right if you have this big big file that you want to add to it instead of saving it to your repository and having it like download and download all the changes and stuff like that essentially what it does is if you if you installed git LFS is it has this other remote server somewhere else online that 
is made to specifically storage large files. And that file is actually stored there. And Git has like a little reference saying, oh, well, you can find that file from the server, it's going to be located here. That's essentially what it's going to say. It's going to say there's reference. It, I'm not going to actually store this file on my server. I'm going to store it somewhere else and just point to it. Say like, eh, the file's over there. So go download it from that server, which is more effective and more efficient. I don't have to keep track of all the changes and, and worry about that. So that's essentially what it does. There's actually a little diagram here that you can look at. And it's essentially what I just drew out for you and explained. So go ahead and download that. And they follow these instructions. Like I'm not going to do this because I already done it a hundred times. So download and install Git. Uh, then after you've installed the the, the actual ins installer or whatever, you call git LFS install. This you have to do in every single repository that you create. So if you have a repository where you don't need git LFS, you don't have to install it. So ooh, let's adjust this lighting again. I'm sorry. Type in git LFS track. And if you want to track certain files uh, into the git large file storage, for example, Photoshop files and 3D models and sounds may be quite large. So you probably want to track all of those files. Now, let me give you a little example. In git attributes, you'll find these sorts of things. And you'll say, oh, well, you see, um, audio dot wave files, filter LFS, diff LFS, merge LFS. This is essentially saying, uh, calling these commands, basically saying track these sorts of files, which is a, any name dot MP3s as a large file storage file and essentially puts those on that server. So you don't have to worry about it being directly in your uh, repository. Now they might appear that way, but they're actually stored somewhere else. And you can do it git add git attributes and uh, make sure that it's actually tracked. So git add dot git attributes, you need to make sure that git is actually tracking that changes in there. And that's it. There's no step three, just come in and push to your GitHub as you normally would. That's all you have to do. You just have to install it, set it up and set up the files that you want to track on Git LFS. And that's it. You're pretty much done. You can use GitHub to upload these huge, large files. It says here that even those as large as a couple gigabytes in size can actually be made. So it's essentially the same, but it just gives you this ability to store these large files that are retrieved much faster. Now let's move on to the final thing, which is going to be how to write a decent Git commit message. Now I really, I highly suggest to, for you to read over this entire um, article. I'm going to post this thing in the comments. Oh yeah. In the comments and in the description, but uh, the gist of it essentially is that there's a seven, seven, uh, rules of great commit messages, separating the subject from the body with a blank line. So if you're doing a git commit message, so you're doing git commit, um, this is the head or what is it called? Um, subject. And then this is the description or body line one. This is body line two. So something like that. I'm going to cancel that one. But that's essentially what it's saying so that it's more readable and you can understand it better. Now Git uh, GUI provides all the stuff for you. So you can write a separate uh, commit message uh, for the subject body and the uh, sorry for the subject and the body limiting the subject line to 50 characters. Once again, GUI does this all for you kind of limits you to doing that capitalize the subject line. This is more like a syntax thing. You don't want to have like lowercase letters everywhere. Uh, do not end the subject line with a period. This is also just a useful thing not to not to put it's just a lot of syntax stuff. Use the imperative mood in the subject line. So don't say stuff like adding or removing say add right? Because when you're going back to things, uh, to a certain messages or certain versions of the code, you want you want to see the commit message saying like, do this, like this is what you're going to be doing. Once you're checking out, so create new character, turn it on, you'll see, oh, okay, create new character. That's what has been done in this commit. Yeah, use the imperative mood, wrap the body at 72 characters. Once again, it's very useful stuff and uh, use the body to explain what and why versus how go ahead and read this. This you don't have to follow it like to a T. It doesn't have to be absolutely like perfect, but it's a good uh, thing to follow. So go ahead and read through that. I'm not going to read through the whole thing. It's going to take me 10 minutes and another 10 minutes and explain everything. So if you like this video series and you want to see more, please hit subscribe on my channel and ring that bell so that you get notifications when I release my future videos, which are going to be on Monday, Wednesday and Friday uh, starting. I guess this is going to be a Friday video. So I'm starting next week on Monday. Remember to join the discord server using the link in the description and the top comment if you have any questions about this or if you have suggestions for future videos. And if you don't join, I will feel very lonely and sad. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. I hope you learned something. Bye. Oh